Yes, yes, welcome to another episode of The Kickout. We've got Extreme Rules to talk about. we got WWE Raw. we got AEW Rampage. we got so much more to talk about. Uh, I go by the name of Ryan Skillet. My name is Mex. And uh, yeah, we're just coming back at the heels of Extreme Rules. Mex, how are you first and foremost? How are things with you, my brother? Yeah, very, very good. Um, just the usual planning content, trying to keep your ears down to the ground of what's happening. Um, you got um did you did you mention how much subscribers you got last time you were on the pod i don't know i, don't know if we did I think I, I think i did i think i had to reach the the milestone the little milestone of 500 subscribers 500 so thank you guys <laughs> as well for your support all the listeners and stuff with that um but yeah love love talking to you guys so you know reach out we always love getting involved in the discussion on the kick out on um twitter so yeah keep doing that want to hear your points of view Perfect. Um, it was obviously extreme rules this weekend. Uh, but before we talk about everything WWE and, and, and the world of WWE today, uh, should we talk about things outside of wrestling? Uh, first and foremost, um, any news updates, Max, um, that we have to talk about? Anything outstanding? I can't really think of anything, if I'm honest with you. Um, so, I mean, in terms of news updates, um, there's been some stuff, if you like. Um, mm. Obviously, they've they've... It's, public news now about this uk um this uk event they're gonna do next year ninety thousand seater probably SummerSlam, um and they've announced that it's most likely going to be in wales um in cardiff so um yeah that's that's going to be very very good i think it's the 30th anniversary of SummerSlam. yeah um, since 1992 when it was last year yeah so um yeah, I mean, I, I can't help but think that's going to be a massive coronation for Drew McIntyre for something. But um, yeah, because when we were at um, uh, WWE Live last week, uh, we kind of got a little uh, exclusive. I'm not going to mention who told us, uh, but it was in WWE employee. Yeah. And it uh, kind of gave us a little heads up that this is going to be announced. But uh, he, he kind of hinted, he made it out like it was like SummerSlam. We don't know. Yeah. I mean, that hasn't been mentioned yet. Uh, but Ace and I straight away thought, yeah, this is probably Drew's time to to get the big pop because he never got it when he won it WrestleMania last year when he won the belt against Brock Lesnar. Yeah. So this might be it. Yeah, that's that's definitely probably the biggest story and obviously something for us UK fans to look forward to. Interesting. Um, more and more stories keep coming out in regards to Adam Cole. Obviously, he's done the famous Talk is Jericho podcast straight after you get released or you leave and, you know, you spill the dirt. And he's been talking about all the changes, you know, all the pitched ideas that he heard for himself, all the ones he didn't speak of him cutting his hair um, on main roster, talk of him changing his name. Obviously, we've already heard about the pairing with Keith Lee. Yeah. Um, kind of stuff. Just wild things that you think, is this your real attempt to keep somebody in this company yeah telling them telling a massive star someone that was a star before he even came to your company to yeah cut his hair and change your change his name um absolutely crazy what do you think about that yeah it's um it, it, you know it's funny how things go full circle i remember when like when rick flair was in uh from in the, in the early 90s of this wcw run obviously he's already a legend by this point do this thing in nwa and whatnot and then I didn't really have anything creative for Ric Flair back in 1991, 1990. Yeah. And, the, and the same things that you're telling me that they are telling Adam Cole was the same things creative and WCW would say to Ric Flair, or oh, maybe you should cut your hair. Maybe you should wear a, 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 a earring. Maybe you should stop wearing the robes. And Ric Flair was like, are you insane? And then Ric Flair left when WWE won the Royal Rumble, became another champion again, and then came back yeah. to WWE hotter than ever. So it's it's, it's 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 interesting how things go full circle. Now WWE seems like to be the one who are <laughs> who are struggling creatively to yeah. think of things to do with uh, wrestlers, which is normally the other way around. But um, I think Adam Cole, hearing from what we heard uh, with the rumours about him trying to manage Keith Lee and what they wanted to do with his image, definitely made the right decision to go AW. Yeah, definitely. 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 Um, some other news, um, Brody Lee, there's going to be a special viewing for the a premiere documentary of his life in Rochester, New York, in a, I think a cinema in Rochester, New York, um, today, obviously AEW Dynamite, which will happen tomorrow night, um, as of time of recording, 
um, will be in Rochester, New York. So nice little kind of tribute for the man, apparently. So lots of kind of wrestlers accounts from the early beginnings of his career as to, you know, where he, he left us. And um, yeah, that's going to happen. And obviously, along with that, this was a bit of news from last week. It's been heavily rumoured that Bray Wyatt is mm-hmm. signing for AEW and debuts tomorrow night in Rochester, New York. Um, he has apparently got a clause in his contract that would mean he could not, you know, have to stay for the 90 days, which the 90 days, I think, will take him up to another month or so. He's about at around 60 days now, I believe. Right. Um, yeah. So, and if he's going to debut in AEW, it has been said that tomorrow night is the night. So that's, that's something to look out for. That's very interesting. I never heard of that rumor. So yeah. Bray Wyatt might be showing up to AEW tomorrow? As early as tomorrow, because he's got a clause in the contract um, to mean he can escape the 90 days. And that's basically just come to light. So, um, yeah, it would mean, obviously, he doesn't get paid for the remaining time or whatever the case is. Um, but I'm sure that's the least of his worries if he wants to just get on and do something creatively. I don't know. I feel like they should save him. If he's going to appear in AEW, if he signed a contract with AEW, I think he should be saved. I think I think they shouldn't rush him on screen anytime soon. We've had so many grandioses uh, debuts in a, in a yeah. short time within 2021 alone. I just feel like they could have really this like, yeah, have him sign, have him on the payroll, really think clever and creatively about what's the steps, what's the booking steps you're going to have with Bray White. What's the, you know, obviously they probably got the new gimmick down, whatever the gimmick's going to be, they probably got that down. Yeah. But in regards of like, all right, how are we going to like plan for you to be like must see TV? How, do you get what I mean, Max? Like, Bro, I just... even, even the 90 days, and I, this is what I spotted when he was first released. Even mm. the 90 days ends on a Friday, <laughs> right? The last Friday in October. And what is the, 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 the Saturday in October 30th is like yeah. Halloween. Halloween. He could debut on the on rampage Halloween. before Halloween. That I is like that. so Bray Wyatt. Like, I like that. So, like you're saying, even if they held it off till then, when he's you know he's actually played out his ninety days, um, that could work well. Um, I don't know where he fits in because a lot of people have said, yeah, he should take over the Dark Order, but that might, that might be stepping on Brody Lee's feet and all of that kind of stuff. But if it's a hum- it could be a homage. It could be a homage to Brody. Yeah, Lee. yeah, you're you're completely right. So we'll see if even if he turns up we'll see how they use him because ultimately- personally i think the dark order is probably the best route it, it will it will help split up that faction it will help um pushing the guys who got a bit more soft uh you know like the john but, silvers and stuff but like this that. is what people are saying now it's going to turn into like a interviewer interviewer wolfpack thing with a split um, inside, like a war. it won't have the same impact because it won't affect it like that because it's not a faction people look forward to if that like no offense to the dark order but that's not a yeah. faction people You're tune right. in yeah so it's like i think like if they did split them too obviously and you've got like come on you've got bray white taking over the dark order and you got like uh you know uno what's his name um evil uno. uno evil uno siding with Bray a few other side with Bray and then you know the John Silvers and the ones who kind of take off their mask are with Hangman Page and you've got Hangman Page to come back to as well so you've got like you got this thing where everything's in disarray everything's getting crazy and then Hangman Page comes to save the ones that are saved kind of thing I think I think they should do it man it could it's definitely one way to go um I'm probably just coming back to WWE before we get into what we came here to talk about um Goldberg and Bobby Lashley all but confirmed now for the Saudi Arabia show in yeah. October. No title. Goldberg's going to win back, win that. There's Goldberg's no going to kill him, apparently. That's what he says on Raw. Mm. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe not, actually. Maybe Lashley wins again, because the way Vince has been booking Lashley has been really... Sh- that, Lashley's that would booked. be brilliant. He needs but it. He's booked very strong. Losing to Roman, losing to Big E... We can't afford to just, you know, basically piss away the guy we've built up for a whole year. Yeah, so, no. I feel yeah. like hopefully Vince will make Lashley win that twice. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Uh, before we talk about WWE and uh, Extreme Rules, uh, quick talk about um, Dynamite last week and AEW Rampage Grand Slam. I don't think we did a podcast after the Kenny Bryan match, did we? I don't think we did. So no, this will be... 
this will be us to it first time talking about that. Uh, a classic. I mean, not a five star classic, but a classic nonetheless. A great match between Brian and Omega. It's nothing that uh, we wouldn't, none of us, uh, you know, didn't think that would happen. We all knew as soon as these two lock horns, the, there was there was no, you know, they were going to pull out all the stops and and give us something to remember. And they did that. Um, Brian bumping like crazy all over again. Omega, the ring general that he is, just making sure everything just in control. Um, and I think these two legends just going at it was a, a, a great thing to see on a for Wednesday night. Uh, Max, what did you think of this uh, epic match between Brian and Omega? Epic, like you said. Um, from the minute goal, uh, I just felt like, and I've I've, I've compared it to. And it's going to sound mad when it comes out my mouth, but let me explain. Rock <laughs> versus Hogan, WrestleMania 18. Now, that is like two guys that is like ultimately embody like wrestling show business when we're talking mm -hmm. about the Rock and Hogan. Mm -hmm. Whereas Omega and Daniel Bryan are like two guys that ultimately embody like the indie roots yeah. of doing things. And they're like two kings of the indies, even though they've had you know, a lot of kind of mainstream success, if you like, you know, Omega in New Japan, Brian in WWE. These are guys that are the relatable guys, the everyday guys, if you see what I mean. Never yeah. had like an engine behind them sort of thing. And I, it was just that opening moment of Rock and Hogan where they didn't touch each other for ages and the crowd are losing their minds. And this is what it was um, on Dynamite, or Dynamite Grand Slam, when Brian and Omega mm -hmm. kicked off. Of course, we saw all the old tropes of um, Brian Danielson, things that we haven't seen since his Ring of Honor days in terms of moveset, in terms of just characteristics and stuff, stuff he was saying in the ring. Um, and then we obviously got this interesting finish where it wasn't the, the typical time limit draw of um, I'm just about to pin someone or they're just about to tap out and then the time runs out. These two were literally still kicking the crap out of each other when the bell went and the match you know was coming to an end um i like your comment on not five stars classic but um still a classic and yes it was i'm i i also do agree that <laughs> if the match doesn't necessarily have a finish like an, an ultimate winner i find it hard to rate it at all yeah that's just my opinion but um yeah this match was amazing these men still have a lot a lot to give in terms of what they can do in the ring um, I literally think they were on like gear two when they were having this match. Like this, exactly. Like, nowhere near. What e exactly, and that's the crazy thing. That's how it shows how great they are. The fact that you, I think you're absolutely right. They both of them was not on. They were not on gear three, four, or five. They were, they were just in gear two, just doing their thing, and this. It was. It just felt to me they were only just getting started. Can you imagine that? Because that's somebody else's equivalent to like their gear five. You get what I mean? <laughs> you literally but, like. But that's how great these two are. Um, and what I loved about it was the storytelling they did in the match. Is like so many things that didn't take place. Like Brian tried to lock in the yes lock, and Omega wouldn't let that happen. So that's something mm. that's going to be told down the line for another match. Omega yeah. never hit the one wing. One wing. E uh, did he hit the one wing angel? He nope. didn't, did he? Nope, never hit that. So the finish has never got hit. Um, you know, the bump where Brian took the, the German suplex on the ramp. Oh, oh ramp. my lord. <laughs> At the Omega's V trigger knees. Uh oh my god, just just the you know, it, and Brian looked mash up at the end. And, and that's like, what he wanted. His interview <laughs> after he left WWE was, you know, I, I love WWE, but Vince wouldn't let me do half of this stuff he didn't want me to take any bumps or anything like this so seeing I, I saw a picture of him backstage towel draped over his shoulders his whole face mash up red marks everywhere his whole chest mash up with marks everywhere mm. i thought this guy is living life because this is exactly what you wanted and you've yeah. literally just got it in 30 minutes yeah it's it was amazing and uh like i know i speak for both of us when i say we're looking for more so yeah great Andre, stuff Andre. um what else happened that i mean we don't have to talk about the whole of dynamite we could talk about the mixture between dynamite and rampage uh, i'm assuming there's no more Chavo with andrade because i don't see him anymore so that was so when apparently he apparently yeah he hasn't been seen since he you know him and uh, andrade had a bus stop but apparently he's not done that we probably okay. will see him again that's okay. what the rumors are but um yeah we haven't seen him yet 
interested. Um, um, main event, we saw the women's match, um, AEW Women's World Championship, Britt Baker defend against oh, yeah, Ruby um, Soho. Soho. Really good outing for Ruby. You know, she's still kind of rubbing off that WWE ring rust. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've got a thing about spotting people's faces when they're coming out to defend the title. And Britt Baker looked pissed when mm. she was making her entrance. And I thought, oh my God, is Britt Baker gonna about to do Leave the job? Is that why she's she's angry? But no, she's just playing us basically. Ring psychology. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She had Rebar and Jamie Hayter next to her, helping her as well, helped to get the, the win over on Ruby Soho. Um so yeah, unfortunately, I thought Ruby was gonna buck the trend of making these casino battle royals and stuff actually mean something that the win the winner of those actually goes on to win the title. But no, they're still meaningless. <laughs> After two years of doing them, we still haven't had a winner from them. So yeah. I mean, who knows? This could be a I mean, I'm not I think I think you're absolutely right. Don't get it twisted. But who knows? This could be like a clever ploy of AEW to be like, hey, anybody who wins these battle royals doesn't win it until the day. Somebody actually does win it, and it's like, oh, that's it. I but, mean, we're waiting but for that day. I, I'm with you. They haven't fought that far ahead. They haven't. Yeah, they yeah, haven't. yeah. Um, okay, yeah. I mean, I don't really, I can't really remember too much about Dynamite. Let's go straight into to Rampage, CM Punk, Powerhouse Hobbs. Now, yes, Powerhouse Hobbs is very green, mm-hmm. and he didn't do a bad show. And there were some great moves he did, like the the the, the soup. I think it was like a belly to belly suplex he did on Punk that was very like. Ooh, Ooh, that was really yeah. good. His spine uh, buster is fantastic. Spine buster was fantastic. Mm. But I don't, I'm not just saying this about Hobbs because Hob, uh, Hobbs is very green. So this is not, maybe not a totally fair comment. But Punk's, in my opinion, track record with like big man wrestlers like a Hobbs or a Ryback or anything like that, not really great. It, yeah. if, it feels to me Punk's gets legitimately <laughs> beat up. I mean, maybe he's selling it to make it look that way. Yeah. But but it does seem to be punk moves very slow with these matches. It just doesn't flow like I want it to be. I'm not that invested. Um, but it did look like I think Hobbs was knocked out in this match at one point. It looked like Hobbs got hurt at one point in this match. Maybe I'm um, wrong. There was a point where I think there was like an attempted. Was it a hurricane runner off the top rope? I think. Yeah. And he kind of dropped on his head. His head. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, but it wasn't a bad match. I want to make that perfectly clear. It wasn't a bad match. Just. Just after seeing the Derby Alley match, which was booked perfectly and was really entertaining, I felt this was a bit like, oh. I think, you, I mean, you may have a point with your observation of Punk with the big men, especially where we know he's been hurt with the likes of Ryback in the past. Mm. So he may be a bit tentative when having these kind of matches, just because you, obviously their, their weight isn't anywhere near the same that he mm. has to deal with. However, saying that, I was genuinely shocked with the speed he picked up Will Hobbs to deliver the GTS at the end. Yeah, yeah. Like, he didn't even like sell the fact that he's picking up a bigger guy. He literally just picked him up, bang, done it, yeah. pinned him, and it was over. Um, and then it looked like Punk maybe went up, you know, when they were on the floor still, went up to him and kind of said, you know, maybe apologize for the Hurricane Runner spot or whatever the case. I think was. you're right. Yeah, yeah. He, he, broke, he, he didn't even like, he, he broke character and just straight told him like, yeah, you're right. I hope you're yeah, okay. Yeah, it, yeah. It looked like he had some type of, because me- like you guys have been feuding. He said something to him. Will Hobbs replied and he like tapped his chest. Like, yeah. okay, cool. And, and done with the celebration. I like that though. Yeah, I, yeah. Like, I do like that. He do- that's what he's there for ultimately. And he's not here to hurt these guys. <laughs> he's here yeah. to, to try bring these younger talents along. So yeah, he's doing his due diligence. Best match of Rampage uh, last week, Friday, obviously Jurassic Express and Christian versus the elite Adam Cole and Young Box. This was a very entertaining match. Uh, Adam Cole picked up the victory, I guess, but right? he hit the boom on Jungle Boy or yes. Christian. Yes, Jungle Boy, Jungle yeah. Boy. Um, and now we're getting this week, tomorrow, we're going to get Adam Cole versus Jungle Boy on Dynamite. Uh-huh. I, th- I think they're in trouble with Adam Cole. Like, he's massive. He is a big, big star. And there is only a, like, I'm sure they're going to tell a brilliant story in terms of, you know, the breakup of the elite and all of that kind of stuff. And he'll probably play into it because their, their whole thing before, you know, before he went to NXT was he was getting too big. Omega was a bit jealous of how big Adam Cole was getting and all of that kind of stuff. Um, hence why they eventually went on to kill Adam Cole. Um, but yeah, I think AEW in general, like the reception for Adam Cole every time he steps out. I know because the elite has done so, I mean, even the elite are like, 
everybody's fan favorites really and truly they've done a, such a great job of making the fans participate of them being booed you know with the yeah. stuff they have the way they dress the way they cut promos the way you know obviously they're putting on these classics all the time but yeah. they they are playing heels really well and now that adam cole has joined this faction it's kind of like oh right we're back to being cool heels again and not heel heels to get what i mean so yeah yeah i think you're right i think adam cole kind of makes that juxtaposition a bit different uh it's interesting though because of all the bully club members like like cody broke away from the elite uh hangman page broke away from the elite. i didn't think if they did ever get cole they will throw it back in but I, it, it works. It just, yeah, it's interesting to see. I mean, the, the running joke now, especially on BTE, is Adam Cole is looking for Hangman Page. They haven't told Adam Cole that they don't mess with Hangman Page no more, that he's not in the elite. And we'll probably, maybe when Adam Page is back, we'll probably get something with them two trying to interact, being told not to. And that might, you know, they're boys. So yeah, that might lead to the, the separation. Who knows? But yeah, yeah that, they've got a real problem with trying to maybe... Um, you know, hold their horses with Adam Cole because the crowd before too long are going to want this guy to have some sort of push. We saw like a six-man match with Ortiz, Santana. No, eight it was man. an eight-man match. Yeah. So Ortiz, Santana, Phoenix, Penta versus uh, Matt, Matt what, the Hardy oh, office. Matt, 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 Hardy family office. Yeah. That was fun. That was actually good. Ortiz and, and Santa look brilliant. Different gear, bro. Yeah. They've gone into a different gear in recent yeah. weeks. Like, yeah, they have. They stepped yeah. up big time. Mm -hmm. So looking forward to when they potentially eventually clashes with the Lucha Brothers. Because I can see that happening. I think this is what it's going to lead to. Mm -hmm. Let's just go straight to the main event. Uh, Moxley, Eddie Kingston, Minoru Suzuki, Lance Archer, tag team match. It was in Eddie Kingston's hometown, wasn't it? Yeah, in New York, uh, Queens, New York. Queens, New York. Um, very good brawl back and forth. You know how these four put on, they'll put on a great match for you to watch. Really good main event. But we got a surprise uh, appearance from the one and only Homicide, mm -hmm. who has a lot of history with Eddie Kingston, and they've tied that mm -hmm. back in. This is what AEW is really good at doing, is tying in stories from like, all kinds of independent promotions from all over the globe or all over America. Because they especially. know that we know about it. Yeah. So rather yeah, than being right. stupid, like these guys are strangers. Like, um, oh man, I love Homicide. Yeah. Homicide was like one of my favorites from the original cast of Ring of Honor. And like, mm. yeah, then he went TNA, made a name for himself in TNA with LAX with Hernandez. But his injuries has always made me feel what if I, I always had that what if question like oh man i really would have loved to see hernandez and um, i mean homicide in a wwe ring but yeah. that was never meant to be that and uh, amazing red as well right amazing red nearly nearly got into wwe with the cruiserweight classic recently yeah such a such a banks was the one who told me that um but it was good to see homicide and it was good to see the crowd you know, it wasn't a big pop like I ever thought it would have been, if I'm honest with you. There was still a lot of group of sexual people who didn't know who he was, but he still got a, a, a smattering of homicide chance. Um, what do you think is is this just a is just a, is that was that just a one off for that match? Are we gonna see homicide back with Eddie Kingston in AEW or no? I think it's a one and done. I think it's a one and done. I, I can't is it a one and done, done as in one and done that appearance, or he'll have a one off match and then go. I think it's done. <laughs> I, think, I think what I think what we saw was it. <laughs> I can't imagine seeing him again, to be honest. Uh, that wasn't really that great then, because it wasn't like he did anything. Yeah, I mean, he he helped them. Good. He helped them, but it would have been good if he did a little spot. But I think, yeah, I don't think he can wrestle like he used to anymore. I don't. I think yeah. he's done. So, right, but, or you know, or interact with the LAX that took over the original LAX, which was Santana it's and Santana Ortiz, Ortiz. You know, right. Well, yeah, yeah. We've seen that already in like TNA feuds and stuff mm. like that. So you probably don't need to go back there again. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, yeah, AEW still doing great things. Uh, my brother rang me the other day. He said, oh, oh, Matthew, who's our barber. He said, oh, Matthew, show me the Brian and Omega match. Oh, well, I'm going to start watching AEW now. <laughs> I, was like, bro, I was like, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Come back. It's definitely the thing to watch these days. 100%. All right. Uh, should we talk about one match before we talk about extreme rules, let's which was let's. the which was the SmackDown main event last week. Uh, you said it on your podcast at WrestleManiac uh, UK when I was on your show this week. I'm not going to give away what it was because we haven't put the episode yet. Yeah. But you mentioned that you felt that was the solo audition for 
or one Montez forward, which you possibly might be right about. Uh, Montez forward versus Roman Reigns. This is really good. I really enjoyed this. Montez forward seemed a bit nervous. He made a few mistakes, but that's that's natural. But he looked good against Roman Reigns. Uh, what did you think of Montez Ford getting a main event slot like this? It's a great showcase for him. He, the promo work backstage, you know, to kind of motivate the match was great. Um, and then he, obviously he stepped into the ring with arguably the biggest name in professional wrestling sports entertainment today. So, um, of course, there will be, you know, trips and slips and a few nervous moments, like you mentioned, but nothing that, you know, totally derailed the match or hurt anybody. Um, and yeah, he just put on a good show in. I mean, this is the thing with Montez Ford. We all say he's ready for this solo run because he's so good in the ring. He's so good on the mic. His character's entertaining. Um, but yeah, he, he got beaten by, obviously, the, the big dog. And um, they went on to really beat him up after the match as well. Um, but yeah, I, I, I can't help but think, you know, this is an audition. Like we mentioned, uh, like you said, on the weekend, Street Profits have done everything. They won the NXT Championships. They held the Raw Championships for over 300 days. They've been SmackDown Tag Champions. What's left? There's a draft coming up this week. <laughs> like, yeah, it's very possible. Well, we're going to talk more about Street Profits as we review the Extreme Rules. Um, after the beat down of Montez Ford, the, the demon uh showed up like Batman and made the save. Uh, we're gonna talk more about the demon in a minute, too. All right, let's talk about it. Extreme, <laughs> extreme rules in where was it? Sin, no, it wasn't Cincinnati, was it? Was it Columbus, Ohio? Columbus, I Ohio. Pre the kickoff match was Liv Morgan versus Carmella. It was good to see Liv Morgan. Uh, I'm a, I'm a fan of Liv Morgan. She really tries hard and it was good to see her do a thing. It wasn't a bad match. You know, this is the kind of match you would expect between these two. Yeah. They tried their best and it wasn't a bad match. It was quite nice. It was quite... What did you think of Liv Morgan versus Carmella? Oh, you didn't see it? Same. No, no, I, I saw it, but same. I, I echo your seg your sentiments. Yeah. Um, Liv Morgan is massively over. Me personally, I still don't understand why like i understand that she's good she's she's a decent wrestler but i don't even feel like she's done enough in front of us to be loved so much if you see what i mean but i just she, think she's just, she's just likable i think she's yeah just yeah and that's yeah. what i think you know with the power of the internet these days it probably goes a long way to helping to get some of these guys over um guys and girls so yeah um all power to her she got the win hopefully it materializes into something else on on the show um on smackdown so, yeah, Liv Morgan beats Carmella on a kickoff show. The first match that kicks off Extreme Rules uh, officially, not off the kickoff show, is a three man tag team match. The New Day, Big E, Kofi, Xavier Woods, WWE champion Big E, um, versus Bobby Lashley, Omos, and AJ Styles. This was actually really fun and entertaining, actually. I really enjoyed this match, actually. And, like, even the way it was booked, um, yeah, I couldn't tell where they were going with this match. Like there was somebody this match out of their backside because it wasn't yeah. advertised. Like no, it's like it all like... of a sudden before the pay per view started, it's like oh, the WWE champion isn't on the show. Yeah, New Day isn't on the show. Let's just yeah. throw these guys together. So um, yeah, yeah, that's what they did. But like you said, it was a really entertaining match. I really love the finish of uh, AJ Styles going for the the phenomenal forearm. Bobby tags him in. There's a whole miscommunication. Bobby spits AJ Styles, and then we get the big ending for the finish. So, Big E is looking good in his WWE Championship reign so far, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, this is a really good match. I felt, I felt, um, yeah, I felt AJ was amazing in this match. AJ was really good in this match. I, I, yeah, you see, you see AJ, he's yeah. warming up. AJ is telling these people, "You lot better remember who the hell I am." One hundred percent. He was phenomenal on Extreme Rules. He was phenomenal last night on Raw against Rizal. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah. Maybe they're going to separate him and Omos and, you know, he's going to finally get put back into a title picture to be at least a contender to Roman or Big E. Or Big E, maybe, yeah. Yeah, they need to run that because AJ Styles is too good. I'm sorry. He's too good to be a tag team competitor. And, like, <sighs> you talk about Omegas, you talk about the Bryans, like AJ Styles. Is, up he's, he's up there, man. He's one of the greatest of all time. Uh, um, but yeah, he yeah he really like did some stuff. I was like, yes, this is like old school AJ. Biggie was really good in the ring. Biggie was just like solid. Bla Lashley was really good actually. Lashley's I think very good, man. Lashley was doing bits in this match. So yeah, I, you know, 
credit to all all six men in that match. They all played their part, and it was a it was a great um, kickoff match for well, opening match as I say to Extreme yeah. Rules. After that, um, I believe did we see was it? It wasn't a US title match, was it? Um, after the no, it was the tag team match, Street Profits versus the Uzos for the this Smackdown was really tag good. championships. This was, this fun, was yeah. really good. Uh, Street Profits versus the Usos. Another great match between these two tag teams. Uh, really pulling out all the stops. Montez looked amazing in this match. Yeah, oh, Andrew cool. Dawkins as well. It was just it was just a great match, man. Dawkins is very good. Like even uh, if I say, you know, you know, Montez is going to be the star. He'll go solo. Blah blah blah. Dawkins in the last six months has has kind of really tried to at least keep pace and make sure if that split is, ever is to come, that there's still enough about him to at least have a little run and get his opportunity as a single star as well. And you, you never know, man. If Dawkins becomes, he might not become a main event or star. Well, who knows, actually? Wrestling's mm. so unpredictable, you never exactly, know. Literally, yeah. But, but if, 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 if Montez is the one that's like, seems to be prim and ready to be that main event star, and Dawkins is like at least a Christian kind of style, caliber star, that's still a success. You know what I mean? That's still a star. So, Even if both of them, you, you know, they, you love telling those stories of tag teams that break up and fight each other for the rest of their lives and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. And Dawkins could always be um, an excellent foil to, to Montez Ford, which will probably, you know, turn to be the baby face and all of that kind of stuff. But both <laughs> men are literally chiseled from wwe soil as they like these days you know yeah. they haven't had runs on the indies they've been wwe made so hopefully they reinvest that into them if they are to ever split them up i mean you talk about a match with near falls there were so many near falls in this match i didn't know where it was coming there was one minute where it looked like street profit was going to win the titles and there's the next minute and they look back like street profit's going to win it again when montez did that uh flip over the top rope to, ca to catch both men the the um, you know what I'm talking about the, the front flip, flip over the over the perm buckle, yeah, over the ring yeah, yeah. into and then throwing it back in, did the frog splash. You're thinking, oh, this is it, but then obviously Uso stopped it, yeah. and then uh, Uso's finally got the win. But yeah, great match. And if that if that is like, I mean, I don't know if it will be. If that is the last match we'll ever see of the Street Profits at this time, mm -hmm. it's a great match for to, to end on. You know what I mean? Yeah. One of the best tactics of all time, the Usos. You know, if if Montez and and Angelo split off a little bit. It might be a bit early. Uh, who knows? But um, yeah, we'll see. Um, what was the third? What was the match after this, Max? After this, we had the um, women's championship, Raw Women's Championship match, Charlotte Flair versus Alexa Bliss. Another match I enjoyed. I, di I didn't have no interest in this feud at all. I don't really care about the Alexa Bliss Bray Wyatt gimmick. I think I just, I'm just over it. Mm -hmm. um, even though some people do like the whole bunny thing with the Charlotte bunny and all that, the but uh, you know, the Charlotte Teddy, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, this match was still cool. Um, you know, Charlotte, the ring general, as she is, just kind of just, Charlotte is excellent, yeah, she's man. brilliant, man. She's doing her thing, she works hard, man. She just goes in, and Alexa Bliss does, does her part as well. So, this was a really good back and forth. Um, obviously, Charlotte got the win because she's always, she's always gonna win, and um, at the end, she ripped up the um. Teddy, the teddy yeah, Alexa Alexa attacks her like that like crazy at the end and then holds the teddy and cries and which actually got um a decent reaction from the crowd. The crowd actually was into it. But I felt I felt Alexa was a bit too long outside crying about it. Yeah, mean, they did they left yeah. her hanging for a bit as if something was gonna happen. I was waiting for like some like spooky spell to come down and maybe make Alexa explode or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> like nothing happened. Um, but apparently it's been said that Alexa Bliss is now on like a a break two to three month break yeah yeah so maybe this is that's the end of that gimmick they're gonna write her off tv now come back as you know her regular kind of goddess gimmick I, oh god i hope so maybe come I back in the so. rumble in january she needs to come back as a normal alexa bliss no more of this crazy stuff so yeah hopefully that's yeah hopefully that's a good write off make a rest for three months come back maybe win yeah maybe if she wins the women's world rumble mm. i'll be up for that Oh, I, I, I can't say that would be my pick if we're going to talk Royal Rumble picks, but to, look at, to look see at her re-debut in the Royal Rumble would be good. Well, actually, I know who's going to win the Royal Rumble next year. Shane DeBazer. Please, God. Yeah, please. because they, they're building a backup again, aren't they? They're trying to make a, a badass again. So, mm. yeah, I think it's her. It's and good, I think, It's a good early shout. I think you're right. I think Bliss would be... Maybe Bliss would be the one that would eliminate Charlotte. I mean, Charlotte would probably have the belt by then. but yeah. Or eliminate a big name. Let's just say that. Okay. All right, cool. And what was the match next, Max? 
after this, we heard Damian Priest versus Jeff Hardy versus Sheamus for the US title. This wasn't a bad match. I thought um, it was pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty good. It was good. I just felt there was a few butches that Priest kept making. Oh, really? The, okay. Uh, I don't know if you noticed. So there was a bit where... I mean, I'm just going to go straight into the matches and not even talk about the match. <laughs> but there was a bit where, you know, when Seamus does his bell counter, what's yeah, it called yeah. again? Uh, ten, 10 beats of the Baron. I knew you would know, Max. That's why you're the fucking guy. <laughs> 10 beats of the bell, whatever it is. So he's doing it. He's going to do it to Priest. Priest grabs his arm, right? Mm. Priest throws his arm around, goes round Seamus, and he's supposed to hit Seamus with it. He slips off the apron. Did you not notice that? He sits off the apron and falls down, had to get back up. And Seamus is hanging on to the ropes, waiting for him, waiting for him. And then Priest had to go back up. And, uh, uh, I was like, oh, you just ruined it. And then there was another time. Uh, I don't know if Priest was just nervous a bit, or I don't know. But there was another time where Jeff reverses Priest's... Um, what's the Cody Rose finisher again? Road, road, um, crossroads, crossroads. Yeah, yeah, what, yeah. When he reverses Priest's version of the crossroads into a twist of fate, and then Priest loses his yeah, step. I remember that. Back. I remember that. And he fell back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, so Priest, he messed up twice in this match. And I was a bit like, oh. But the match, you're right. Let's be honest. The match was good. I mean, you're not going to get a crap match between Hardy, Sheamus, yeah. and Priest. And you just remember how much of a star the Hardys are when people are watching this match like, yeah, this is cool. This is cool. This is cool. But when Hardy's gaining momentum and when Hardy's looking like he might win the belt, the crowd was going nuts. Like, hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, Jeff, he's a star, man. Like, people will really want to see Jeff win back that US title. But people wasn't disappointed when Priest, Priest won as well. I mean, it was a really good finish. Priest, I think he... Did he pin Sheamus? I think he pinned Sheamus. He pinned Sheamus. And that was yeah. a surprise for me because I thought ultimately jo Jeff Hardy being added to this match to take the pin. <laughs> Yeah. The weeks before this, Jeff Hardy was on main event, the show. Jeff Hardy was chasing the 24-7 title. And then all of a sudden, he beat Sheamus to enter this match. So I thought, they're not reinvesting in Jeff Hardy. He, he'll hold the pin. But no, it was Sheamus. I feel like the way the way Priest is getting booked, Vince must really like him. They they 100% they like him. Yeah. He's tall. He he's he's from Latin America. So he speaks yeah. the language. He's a representative over there for them. Not a bad talker either. Not a bad talker. Obviously, from the minute he debuted on the main roster, he eliminated Kane in the Royal Rumble. Yeah. Someone that's got like Royal Rumble records. Um, so yeah, they 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 definitely got something in store for him. Um, what was the next match after this? So after this, we had the women's um, the SmackDown Women's Championship match. Becky Lynch defending against Bianca Belair. This was good. Um, two stars in the ring, Bianca and Becky. Uh, felt like a big fight feel. Um, I felt the crowd could have been a bit hotter for these two, though. I think there was a, they were a bit flat, but it wasn't the worst, you know, reactions. It was still like very red hot, but it was just certain things was done, certain spots was happening, and nobody like cared. There's definitely that element, but you know what the problem is? It's because the crowd don't want to turn on Becky. They don't. And we said this come SummerSlam, yeah, no. like, yeah, she done what she did against Bianca. Bianca's the baby face you've been building up forever. And your your big star comes back and squashes her. And it's like, well, we still want to cheer Bianca, but we want to cheer Becky. And turning the crowd against Becky was always going to be a difficult ask, which is why I always wondered why the hell they're actually trying to do it. But... Yeah, because I saw, I know it's like, you know, Bianca came out with the E, and there was like a lot of people holding the EST um, signs, and then yeah. then people had the Becky showed up, and it was like the man signs were like all. <laughs> I was like, oh no, this is not going to work. And bro, even at you know the other week we were at WWE Live in London, um, people were booing Bianca Belair in the main event and cheering um, Becky Lynch. Now I understand, you know. Becky's is probably closer to her hometown wise and stuff like that. There's obviously a lot of Irish people live in London and that, but like booing the baby face, like yeah. come on, that's a bit too far, guys. Yeah, oh, it's God. a weird dynamic. They might have made they might have made a mistake here, but it doesn't matter. This match was good. It was going that's back right. and forth. It's very entertaining. I didn't skim through this match at all because there's some matches that didn't skim through, but I, I still watched it. But I was like mm. skimming a bit. But with this match, I watched the whole thing start to finish. I was very hooked, very intrigued. And then it won Sasha Banks returns. Oh, and to my delight, I popped. 
Mm. Uh, the crowd popped, and even when she attacked both women, people were saying "Thank you, Sasha." Yeah, uh, which is interesting. <laughs> so she attacked both Becky and Bianca. Yeah. I'm assuming we're going to see a triple threat match at Survivor Series. Well, this is the thing: Survivor Series are usually running this brand versus brand foolishness. But yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, they can do, you know, like I don't know, like so remember back in the day when it used to be like teams for Survivor Series or like elimination style matches, hence the name Survivor. Like, yeah, they need to return to that because even with all these factions we've got in the New Day, the Hurt Business now, the Bloodline, wouldn't like a war games match between those three be brilliant? Yeah, yeah for sure. Like, they need to move away from this brand versus brand crap. It's interesting, you know. You just remember, you reminded me. It's, it is very much brand supremacy with Survivor Series. So, what are we going to have? Raw versus SmackDown versus NXT 2.0. No, <laughs> NXT is involved. No, Wagner versus Reigns. <laughs> <laughs> Run no, Breaker no. versus Goldberg. But, bro, you know why this doesn't even make sense? Because they're going to do a draft in a week's time, and then yeah. a week later, you're fighting with all your might for the brand that you love. Yeah. Oh, sorry, mate. I just moved here. Like, yeah, yeah, why do I love this place? Like, I don't understand. I was getting treated better than the other brand, actually. I was getting a push. <laughs> Since I come to this brand, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in 205 Live. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in a 24 7 picture. I'm, I'm on main event. I'm chasing what? Reggie. Like, what, what am I fighting for? Oh, yeah, yeah he's the right. brand yeah, supremacy right. thing's a bit dead, man. Get Max the book. That's what I say. Get Max to write this show, god damn it. Hey. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, glad to see Sasha back. We'll, yeah, we'll, see, we'll see what happens. Uh, what was after this? Let's talk about it, man. The main event: oh, Roman yeah. versus Demon Balor. Oh God! So, uh, by the way, can I just say before we talk about what was the finish of the finish? Mm-hmm. I personally thought this match was excellent. Yes, it was. Now I know people say, "Oh, is this the answer?" I've I've seen people say it online. Is this the answer to Brian versus Omega? Listen, you you cannot compare the two. No. This is meant to be sports entertainment. This is a fun, and this is this was a very fun match for the only extreme match on an extreme rules card, which is another whole discussion in itself. Yeah, this was a very very good, well put together match. Yeah, apart from you know the finish, we can talk about. Yeah, absolutely. Um. Very entertaining. Bala looked excellent. His his demon attire with the paint was tremendous. It just gets better. Whoever it does it, gets better every it time. gets better and better, man. There's a really in the element. Um, you know, Reigns looking great. Reigns wasn't scared of the demon, but there was a little bit of apprehension with the, with Reigns when Demon came out. He was a bit like, okay, yeah. you're, you're a bit, you're not right, you're not all there. So it's a bit worried. <laughs> he wasn't scared, but he was a bit worried about the demon. Yeah. Uh, which is good. Um, I don't want Reigns to be scared of the demon. I actually kind of want Reigns to be very strong. How they're yeah. booking him. I like how they're booking him. Uh, but at least show some sort of fear. You know what I mean? And, and I, fe- I felt he did that. Uh, this was a very good, excellent back and forth match. Great table spots. Table. The crowd was chatting for tables from the start. Reigns was chatting. Like, I'll do what I want. <laughs> do what I want. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to give you the table yet. Bala was tremendous. Bala's one of the best workers, man. He was tremendous. For, he was effortless. He was flawless throughout that match um um really good back and forth i think reigns did a table spot in the middle of the ring he put reigns through uh Fal- bala through a table in the middle of the ring yeah. uh gets to a point when bala gets some um uh some momentum he starts doing his thing and then as bala was about to win hit the coup de gras the usos come out interfere they did they put bala through a table I f- no they tried to put bala through a table bala beat up both usos yeah yeah and then Reigns hit Balor with a spear through the through, through, the, the, barricade. through the barricade. As that happened, uh, I think Reigns was like teasing the crowd, trying saying he's the guy, I'm the man. I'm da, 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 da. And then Balor theme music hit, and from the heartbeats, he's like getting revived back to life, like a member of Tekken. I think there's a character I, in Tekken. I, I, I genuinely enjoyed that. I know a lot of people are poo pooing it. But the, that kind of heartbeat thing, and he was no. Like, but I think they messed up because the heartbeat thing. Is, I mean, even though the way Bala was doing it was a bit like okay, mm. but when he got back up, I didn't mind that. But they let the theme play yeah, afterwards. Yeah, yeah, that was a bit like he was much. like he was New Jack, like 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 <laughs> let 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 the man <laughs> let the man come up. Ah, music off. Yeah, yeah, music off. You can keep the red lights. I don't mind that. 
But music needs to come up. All I hear is da 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 man putting man through a table. Da 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 da. And then it's like, it's like, and even the way they took off the music was terrible. It was like, oh shit, we, the music's on, and then like they abruptly took it off. No, the, it, wasn't the, it like... took it off. It took off when he got to the top rope, and the top rope collapsed, isn't it? That's what. Oh the music right. Off. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So all right. So yeah. All right. Yeah. You did tell but me. you know okay. what? I genuinely thought. When that happened and he just went on that run for like 30 seconds, I thought he's gonna he's gonna do it here. <laughs> like that's the thing. So I so I was like, I even I didn't watch it live. So I guess watching it live, I would have had that feeling mm. that you had. But obviously I watched it the next day and I was like, oh, he's blatantly hasn't won because I haven't seen any I haven't seen any. I saw Bala trending. Yeah, and I and I knew people were taking a piss of something. I was like, okay, something something went wrong. But no, I didn't see any like Bala's new champion things. I was like, okay, so Razor's retained it. But but I kind of wish. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's because of the music that was playing. I wish I heard the crowd is rocked for this man. I wanted to hear the crowd think Bala's gonna win, and then Reigns gets the win. But like we called it, Reigns is the second man. Even though they're trying to say he's the first man, Reigns is the second man to defeat the demon. Yeah. Samojo was the first and he didn't need a damn turnbuckle to break. God damn it. Well, this is the first time the Demons lost on the main roster. So, yeah, yeah you know, they, they tend to count NXT and main roster as two different universes. Yeah. So, um, sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what I noticed and I it was, a, it was blatantly obvious to me that there is clearly some type of God gimmick in the works here. Because when it happened, Roman looked to the heavens. He looked at oh, the heavens no. and he was, he was like, you know, what the hell? Like, he looked at the heavens like two or three times. Um, when he got the pin, he looked up again and said, thank you. Like, to God or something. And then when he was leaving the ring, the camera panned over to Roman and he done the sign of the cross. Like, thanking his lucky stars, thanking his God that something, some divine intervention helped him. And this is Vince, isn't it? And this is Vince. And this is this is all on this is all on tape. Like I said on my Twitter, guys, I'm I'm really not making this up. They, they, this is like they're turning the de the demon Bala, who is the face in all of this, maybe into the evil guy. If Roman comes out on Friday with some God spiel, like God chose no, me, but they will do it. But by God, no, but they're doing it. That's like like a heathish way, isn't it? Like he's gonna be like God has chosen me. Yeah, yeah, I'm, that's what I'm I mean. God's I'm yeah. God's chosen one. Look, yeah, I'm the that's head what of the I mean. table. If, yeah. If he yeah. comes out on some like I'm the anointed one, God chose yeah. me. God yeah, he is gonna do that. me because it was the right thing to do. He's gonna then do that. that confirms it, doesn't it? But um yeah. Uh, some some other people I've seen today on Twitter say that um Seth Rollins done it. Um Seth Rollins put pulled it pulled the turnbuckle apart. Maybe Obviously, Seth Rollins is someone that um said that um you know he was next in line for the universal championship and all of these kind of people edge uh, lesnar bala have pushed in front of him um so it might be seth rollins um and to be honest that may make a bit of sense because on the european tour they just done finn balor and seth rollins was a thing exactly um i, think, I was thinking about that and that's probably mm, gonna be the next program between the yeah day. yeah so um yeah but i i think even just to annoy people a bit go the god route that, that <laughs> i think that could be very entertaining. Vince, vince will take that to the next level you know, vince. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get a picture of jesus and he looks like you <laughs> right, it's like he would just take that shit uh you have like Heyman dressed up as a disciple <laughs> like like, well, like they're, really, they're really calling Heyman a wise man yes, like they a, are. A kid to the yes, other they one are. So. yeah they are they probably have roman with like a staff you know, like a Jesus staff. Yeah, and, yeah, oh yeah. Oh my god, and wearing sandals and yeah, man. Oh god, this is gonna go crazy. But yes, you're right. Match was excellent. It's just the ending could have been better. But I'm not as mad as the ending as a lot of people are. Yeah, uh, a lot of people. A lot of people ran to Twitter like, "Hey, Finn, you you will be a star in AEW. What the fuck are you doing here?" No, come on, man. like, like, yeah. We all knew he was gonna lose. This is this is this is this is food for for Reigns. Yeah, of course. But I was thinking. We're going to talk about Raw quickly before we mm -hmm. wrap up. In fact, I'm going to mention what I was thinking when we talk about Raw. Let's talk about Raw. Okay. Raw started off with Biggie, Lashley, rematch, WWE title. It was going really well. 
good match, good action. But I ain't gonna lie, I was like on my laptop a bit, just doing other things. And my ears, my, my eyes and my ears perked up when I saw Shelton Benjamin. Come on. And Cedric Alexander at ringside with the Hurt Business tees that you're wearing. Shout out back to me. Back in business. I saw your podcast. You, you did mention that on your podcast, Back in Business. Yeah, man. Uh, and what I liked about them is that they didn't attack Biggie. They just stood there and they smiled and Lashley smiled. Her business are back together, baby. This is a brilliant decision. I'm waiting for my man MVP to come off the yes. the, the emergency bed, bed hospital mm. and come back and rejoin his brothers. Her business is back. Great decision. Whoever made this decision, hopefully with Bruce Pritchard said, Vince, we need to bring them back together. But very good. I didn't know if the crowd went nuts for this or not. I think the crowd was more shocked than some of it. Or some people cheered for it for the Hurt business the hurt reunion stuff. Yeah, I think I think, and this is what I want, you know, to happen next week. It's just a bit like, why, why did why did they come back? Sort of thing. Yeah, they've got to definitely fill us in next week on the show as to why they've kind of rekindled, squashed their beef, and they're all back together. So her business is helping out Lashley. Obviously, New Day come to save uh, Biggie away from her business. Uh, they all fight each other from outside. All craziness going on, and then um, Adam Pearce comes out and says, "Are oh, we going to have?" a steel cage match between Lashley and Big E at the end of Raw. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, uh, what was after that on Raw? Um, after the initial championship match, we had um, Eric Viking Raiders taking on Angel Garza. Um, obviously, Angel Garza is now paired up with his cousin, Humberto Carrillo. Yeah. Um, they keep saying how handsome they are. Yeah, yeah. Fucking <laughs> Pretty hell. much a squash match. Angel Garza <laughs> beating Eric, the bigger man, fairly clip quickly with the Angel Clipper. I think this is crazy. It was called. All right. Uh, what was after that? Um, after that, Reggie versus Ricochet for the 27, 24 7 championship. I'm not going to lie. I was into this. I was to this. I, I like once it started. Obviously, it was it was cool. I, lo I love the acrobatics and that. Yeah. But like ri seeing Ricochet turn up for this championship <laughs> killed. Me. I know. Me too. I'm not. He, on shouldn't, that. he shouldn't be here. He's no, he should be an IC champ or something. But yeah, I'm. I'm not feeling that. I agree with you. But I am interested to see Reg Reginald Reggie, where he is, Reggie and Ricochet, um, go out in an actual full blown match. That would be. I think that'd be really good. This is the problem, bro. Reggie hasn't laid a finger on anyone. He's been doing front flips and somersaults into people, but can he actually wrestle? Like, you know, like wrestle, Reggie. wrestle. Like, uh, he might be a bit green, but he could probably do a, a few, a drop toe hold or two. He could probably do some. Ricochet can make him look like it. He can, Ricochet can help him. I, I don't doubt that. And they're mates. Yeah. They're, them lot are good mates. Okay. But, well, um, yeah. So, but yeah, like throughout all of his defenses he's been having, he's just been doing front flips and landing on people and pinning them and done. Okay. So. After that, Akira Tozawa picked up the mic and was like, I'm going to challenge anyone and anyone and I don't care who it is. And then it was the debut of Keith Bearcat Lee. That's uh, right. So obviously this is a, a homage uh to to be a cat right <laughs> uh so um yeah man let's, let's, which is which is brilliant uh i like the ring attire with the cat claws all over his looking like swat cats if you remember that yeah, cartoon yeah. yeah um and he just made quick work of a kira desire he looks mean he looks badass and this is the point i was gonna say now i hear the rumors that he's they're gonna turn him heel yeah i don't think I don't think they should mention if he's a heel or face. I think he should just treat everyone the same with the same energy. Just come in there, devour, 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 devour. But remember who nearly beat Roman Reigns in Samara series a couple of years ago? And the crowd went freaking nuts. Yeah. If you just build Keith Lee the way you're building him, keep him strong throughout the whole year, beat everybody on Raw, because he's going to stay on the same Raw roster, I'm assuming, in the yeah. draft. And then you do a switch and make him be the guy to temp to tump to, to, to topple the head of the table a whole year later. It could be it something. Shouldn't be true. It shouldn't be true. It shouldn't be these people. It should be Keith. <laughs> I'm sure Vince remembers that reaction at, at Smart Series. 
Yeah. And this is why I think if you remember back some months ago, maybe towards the top of the year, when all those rumours that Keith Lee got sent back to NXT, this is clearly what they were preparing for. They were giving him more of that generic big man style so that when this character comes along, he can play it very well. I saw like a WWE.com interview or something that he done with that Kevin Patrick guy backstage um, asking him, you know, why did you beat up Tozawa White, how you did? And he was very much giving those kind of stoic one word answers and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, he went on to say he doesn't care whether it's Raw or SmackDown. The same thing is going to happen to anyone they put him in the ring with. And it's, it's heel kind of stuff. But like you said, I guess the the obvious hasn't happened. Um, that, that makes him a heel sort of thing. So he could yeah. very much be sitting on the fence between the territory, if you like, um, with everything he's doing. Um, but yeah, um, it'll be very interesting to see what happens with him and how they how they handle him. The likes of Big E is going to need, um, you know, heels to go up against for his championship. Um, so hopefully we see something good. But I don't know if people will be invested. People are invested in Roman right now, man. To put anyone in front of Roman and to, to beat Roman. It's a big thing for that person, but the crowd might actually poo-poo it. I mean, no. Do that a year from now, though. I think personally, mm. personally, I think people won't get bored of Roman anytime soon. I mean, look at the first year. We've had a year already since Roman's been a heel. Mm. You know, this time last year, Roman was beating Jay Uso to a pulp, right? Yeah. That's a whole year already, right? And that year has gone so quick that I, th- I was like, yo, I st- it still feels like a few months for me that Roman first turned heel. I feel like if you keep Roman doing his thing where he's beating everyone, beating everyone, and then you get to a point where it's like, okay, it's been two years of this. I'm sick of this. Like, that's how you go for the big pops, you know? Like, classic example. Sandman, uh, sorry, Sabu and Taz, that feud in ECW, yeah. where Taz is calling out Sabu for a whole year. It's a whole year of Taz that's chatting shit about Sabu. <laughs> And Sabu's not responding. Sabu's not paying any attention. It was like one segment in the in the time where them two walk past each other and then Sabu just ignored him. And Taz's like, come on, let's go. And I've, even that was like early doors from the feud. Anyway, Taz keep talking shit. Taz will choke out motherfuckers, beat everyone left, right, and center, choke out everyone, choke out everyone, choke out everyone. And and then pick up a mic and call out Sabu. And then there's that moment when Sabu just, the lights go out, Sabu shows up, and the crowd goes nuts. They can do this. They can. And it's Heyman who did all that. True. That is very true. Heyman could do this again. He knows. He knows how to get the crowd going. And if you put that in a right crowd as well, you put that on a Madison Square Garden stage or a Chicago stage, Fast Kid is glory. It won't won't be that. Well, Well, it won't be that. It won't be that. (laughs) But, you know, I don't know. I just like the fantasy book and it doesn't happen. And I say to Max Leo, yeah, you're right. It doesn't, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. uh, well, no, it's good to see Keith Lee at least coming back to some type of, you know. Yeah, he looks good. Head. You should keep the moustache. Never shave. Never yeah. shave. Keep the moustache. So, so. Don't shave that shit. So, yeah. All right. I'm going to mention a few other things on Raw. Um, yeah, Damien Priest, Sheamus for the US title. This is, I, I hope, their blow off. Um, they had a no disqualification match. Um, pretty decent match in the end. Maybe da- Damien Priest atoned for those errors that you mentioned. He made the extreme rules yeah. and he got the pin. Um, after putting Sheamus for a table, um, yeah, he got the pin and, um, yeah, we defended the US title. Yeah, this is really good. Just smash him up, and that was it. Wins. Um, Piper Nevin, I don't have time for this. <laughs> The six man tag, I must say, I am very much enjoying Mustafa Ali and Mansoor. Me too. Me too. <laughs> Mansoor is killing it, right? Yeah, now, he's honestly. sick. He's sick. He's sick. And he's like, he's uh, proper like fanboying out. Everybody's like, oh, he's going to tackle <laughs> Jeff Hardy. Like, but they got squashed by Jinder's yeah, man. Um, Veer. Veer, the guy that's been rolling with Jinder, uh, Veer and Shanky. But Veer done the, put him away with a clothesline. Um, so maybe Veer's getting a bit of a push out of they're, this. They're finally starting to treat them like how they should be treated because let's be real, they're big more huggers, man. Like, yeah, they're, they're, exactly. You know, never getting jobbed out left, right, center, but now they're He's looking like... We're like, losing flipping handicap matches to Drew, to Drew McIntyre. Like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but, okay, interesting. Um, Piper Nevin, who, what's her, what's her gimmick now? What's her, called? What's her name D-drop. called? D-Drop. 
Dewdrop, who should come out too, in my opinion. Groove is in the heart. That, that would suit her, you know. <laughs> that would suit her. They should do that. Um, she beat... No, she lost to Charlotte. She lost to Charlotte because uh, Eva Maria got, got involved. And Eva Maria started cussing her out. And then Eva Maria got mashed up by Charlotte and the crowd cheered. And then Shayna Baszler come out and mash up Eva Marie. And the crowd even went even more crazy and asked yeah. for more blood. And <laughs> let's do it again. And So, yeah. Even, yeah. So, Shayna Baszler is... They're going to... Yeah. They, they, I like how they've looked at certain talents and they were like okay we need to like restructure how we put this guy or this girl and we need yeah. to like so the Keith Lee and Shayna Baze is getting a revamp and now they're getting what they should have done with them in the first place exactly uh, yeah so okay I mean better late than never I guess um and then there's that and then Matt Riddle versus AJ Styles which we talked about earlier great match this match was brilliant yeah um, a lot of fun a lot of fun I think it's one of Matt Riddle's best matches this match is really good. Yeah. Like I said, they, it just seems like in the last few weeks, they're warming AJ Styles up again. Yeah. Um, he'll be I that think... serious competitor to come against Big E and and or Roman Reigns um, in the future. I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. Can't forget Karrion Cross versus Jackson Riker. That happened. Oh, God. Someone made a list. I need to find this this screenshot and find the original video. Someone made a list of names, seven names that should beat Roman Reigns and become Universal Champion. And and I saw the screenshot that Karrion Cross was one of the names. I mean, it probably could have happened had they brought him up to NXT how he was. Brought him up from NXT. before you got before you got injured. Ever since he's been when he says he come back that like injury, he just has. I mean, even though they still booked him kind of strong when he came back from the injury, mm. I just feel. Remember, remember me and you were saying this like even be, like when we had rest things on the on as guests we were both yeah. saying that uh carrying he, he ain't doing it like he used to and then yeah, it just true. got worse and it just got worse from there it got even nice. worse yeah 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 um so i mean i was a big carrying cross support i thought he was going to be the future but it just doesn't i don't know how he's going to get out of this rut man unless they bring unless the unless the wife comes back and this slaps him slaps his face and he's Bro, it's the gear. It's all yeah, this gladiator. That, that demolition gladiator gimmick is yeah. ridiculous. Like, All right. And then we had the main event. Biggie, Lashley, Steel Cage match. This was really good. This was really long. Really long match as well. Uh, back and forth. A lot of action. Hurt Business got involved. New Day got involved. Kofi, we see a crazy Kofi spot. Mm-hmm. We see Xavier would slam the Steel Cage on Lashley's head like a bad boy. Um... We see a back and forth. We see a um, a big ending from the top rope. Biggie gets the one, two, three. Biggie celebrates, and then Drew McIntyre comes out with his sword and challenges Biggie to a duel. Uh, <laughs> so it's Biggie, Drew McIntyre going forward. I I like it. The the thing is, like we have been saying for some weeks now, Drew probably moves over to SmackDown in the draft. So maybe this is literally just next week because they're still you know competing for ratings and all this kind of stuff drew mcintyre versus biggie for the championship um drew mcintyre loses so that's another you know um feather in 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 biggie's hat um you know toppling another wwe ex wwe champion and then drew goes to and then drew goes to over to smackdown on the same night or something i don't know seeing smackdown's on fox and it has that big big money Deal. Mm. Does Rain stay on SmackDown? It's a that's smart the, move if he the, does. It's the question though, because Raw is the one that's suffering right now. It Raw is. needs Reigns, like literally. But, but the big money deals with SmackDown, right? So SmackDown has to now become the A show, right? Basically. <laughs> Even in booking though, SmackDown's a better show than Raw. Yeah. Yeah, I I would want to keep. Um, they should keep Reigns on where he is. It's yeah. working. It's working. But Leave I wouldn't it. be surprised if they pulled a you know desperation move and moved him across. I won't be surprised if Vince just like just chills and he just has these crazy thoughts and he's like, you know, he goes back and forth. He's like, well, the big money moves is Fox, but well, no way. But Raw is the number one show. And, <laughs> and, uh, I need Reigns on Raw. And they're like, well, Vince, Vince, uh, we have like a big contract with. I need Reigns on Raw. Yeah, it's like 
we shall see. We shall see. We shall see. And I just want to say thank you, Mech, for always uh, being my right hand man with the kick out. Um, no we probably won't have Ace uh, for a little while, so it's going to have to be me and you holding on the fort. But there will be some interviews that Ace and I got from last week's WWE live show coming in a couple, uh, the, the next couple episodes that's coming up in uh, the kick out. So I expect some fresh uh, content coming out uh, soon. Um, I'll go by the name of Ryan Skillet. My name is Max. We are the Kick Out Podcast. Subscribe, listen, share, enjoy, support, everything. <laughs> and um, we'll be back with some new content. I'll make sure Max and I will do another uh, episode later on this week. We'll talk about LAC 2.0. We'll talk about Dynamite. And we'll talk about SmackDown it and Rampage. Does. So, yeah. Um, thank you for listening. We are out.